firstly, that there's a lot of people moving around with migration, uh, people moving back to their villages from where they work in the cities. And so there's been a lot of migration of people. And what that means uh, for people affected by leprosy is sometimes they can't uh, complete their treatment because they might start their treatment in one place and not finish it. And that has serious implications for the cure of leprosy. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, a lot of people uh, in, uh, the, that are moving about um, don't always uh, or can't always understand uh, written English or excuse me, written language. And what that means is they can't always follow government guidelines. So there is, I think there's that element that comes into play as well. So uh, I think for many of our colleagues there, they are concerned that not everybody is obeying the rules, if you like, of, of government and guidelines that are being given. So, so that's another issue. And then I think thirdly, Phil, is the, the whole issue around uh, income and what the lockdowns in various parts of the world, like India and Bangladesh and Nepal, has meant is that people can't work. And for leprosy affected people who are often just day workers, in other words, you come and you work a day and you get paid for that, they don't have income. So serious issues with just being able to put food on the table. It has restricted our movement. We want to be out in the community and uh, looking after and serving uh, communities and people and families uh, who are affected by leprosy. And that hasn't always been possible. So certainly it has restricted our movements in some parts and that's brought concerns because it means we can't go out and do the things that we want to do. Now, thankfully, that's starting to lift a bit now, but there has been uh, times during the lockdown where we haven't been able to go out and do the things that we wanted to do. Uh, I think the second thing is that uh, we, we run 16 hospitals around the world and that these hospitals uh, have been asked by governments in various parts to respond and help with the COVID efforts. And what that means is that we have to be very careful with how we keep uh, leprosy patients separate to COVID patients because leprosy patients are already quite vulnerable with their health and can probably quite easily uh, contract uh, COVID. So, you know, there are some different ways of working which we've now had to do as we continue to try and serve uh, people affected by leprosy. We take pride in the fact that we can continue to serve uh, the communities that, uh, that we work in, uh, that we have been able to provide food and cash uh, for communities to, to be able uh, to provide the basics of life, put food on the table. And, uh, and that's been a real thrill to the relationships we have with communities to be able to, to be part of that, uh, their, their, their lives and to be able to respond in a slightly different way maybe than what we normally do. So it's not just leprosy at the moment, it's also providing some basic needs for, for people who are in communities who are affected by leprosy. And I think, I think uh, something else that we've been able to do is really around uh, raising awareness uh, in communities in conjunction with local governments and so forth. And just because we already have those relationships, being able to go out into communities and, and just talk about COVID and what people need to be careful with and how they can best protect themselves against uh, catching COVID. that uh, people will be able to go back to their normal lives and, and have income because what most people, uh, particularly in the communities that we work in, most people just want some money in the hand so that they can get the basics of life. So certainly we'd love to see a more of a return uh, to normal life so that people can put the staples uh, back, on, back on the table and, 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 and get by. We certainly uh, would love to be able to carry on doing uh, our work as best we can. And so, yeah, certainly the ability to get out and work in communities, that will be really, really important. We, we want to do that as well. The other issue is really around um, being able to work with others in, uh, in the communities. We we're already involved with churches, uh, other groups and being able to best coordinate and work with others so that we can help and serve people affected by leprosy.